Hello friends, in this video, I am going to speak about important clinical and practical aspects of COVID-19 management. I hope this video gives value to your knowledge. Do watch it and also share it among the doctors you know. So in this video, we will discuss rules of three for each aspect of COVID-19 management. And the credit for the content I want to give to Dr. Dipti from Verma Hospital, Andhra Pradesh. First of all, three must remember warning signs. That includes high grade fever, which is lasting for more than five days, increase in dry cough while sleeping and talking, exhaustion and exhaustion dyspnea, that is worsening from before. Friends, you have to warn patients for these warning signs, especially those who are home quarantined. Then three reasons for late presentation. First of all, many patients attribute fever to vaccination. Post vaccination fever we settle within 48 hours. It won't prolong after that. And you have to educate patient regarding this. Then, using paracetamol at home for fever, which will mask the fever and so the patient presents late. Then, wrong timeline, that is, reporting testing day as day 1, not onset of symptom. I have seen many patients who will count for the onset of symptom from the day of testing positive, not from the actual onset of symptom. This also needs patient's education. Then, three minor symptoms that can be ignored, which includes anosmia and altered taste, cold and stuffy nose, body aches and throat pain. Why it can be ignored? Because these symptoms are not found to be related with morbidity and mortality. Then, three must have things with home treated patients or patients who are in home isolation, which includes thermometer, pulse oximeter, and contact of emergency doctor or hospital in case of emergency. They should have thermometer for constant measurement of temperature and they should maintain temperature chart for every 8 hourly at home and also pulse oximeter they should have to check the saturation at home and in case of saturation fall or onset of new symptoms they should contact their emergency doctor or nearby hospital for emergency. Then three points not to forget on first OP or teleconsultation visit that is first 6 to 12 days is the danger period. And you have to train the patient or educate the patient for the same. Then report as soon as possible if the danger signs are present. Prefer giving printed report or printed list of danger signs to the patients. Then avoid long prescriptions with 10 plus drugs because patients tend to miss out important ones. Practically, patients tend to go towards multivitamins and paracetamol. They usually avoid important drugs like anticoagulations and antiplatelets. So avoid long prescriptions. Then, things to be monitored daily and informed. The first and foremost and important thing is SPOT monitoring before and after 6 minute walk test. If it is falling less than 94, they have to consult the doctor or nearest hospital. Then, temperature monitoring. Temperature more than 101 degree after 4th day of symptom onset is one of the dangerous signs. Then, resting heart rate of more than 100 is also a dangerous sign. Resting heart rate means they have to check the heart rate during the afebrile phase. Then, three lab parameters indicating storm. First of all, incomplete blood picture, high neutrophil to lymphocyte ratio that is more than 3.5 and high monocytes that is more than 8%. Then inflammatory markers like CRP, ferritin and LDH. Then, D-dimer which suggests the coagulation risk. The importance of D-dimer is also discussed later in this video. Then, three lab values in resource poor settings, which includes total count, neutrophil to lymphocyte ratio and monocytes, then CRP, ESR and chest x-ray. This can be done where the higher facilities of inflammatory markers or CT scan is not available. Then, then if CT is done, three things to see on CT. First of all, day of illness, early CT may mislead because CT may be normal in initial 3 to 4 days of symptom onset. Then severity score. You must look on the severity score, not the CORADS system. CORADS 5 does not indicate the severity. It just indicates the probability of infection, not the severity. Then progressive or resolving changes. If CT is repeated. Remember friends, repeat CT is not recommended. We will come to that point later. Then three mistakes to avoid. Starting steroids in first 5 days. Avoid starting steroids in initial days because it prolongs viral clearance and duration of illness. 
then early CT and lab workup. As I discussed, in early phase of disease, CT scan may be normal or lab values can be normal. But baseline lab values can be done in certain cases. Then missing on prophylactic anticoagulation therapy. Friends, even if D-dimer is normal, you have to start patient on certain anticoagulation or antiplatelet because even D-dimer is normal, we have seen many cases with hypercoagulable state and its complication like stroke, myocardial infarction, etc. Then, three indications of cytokine storm. This is very important because patient may land up into cytokine storm at any point of time, especially after fifth day of treatment. And indicators include respiking or continuous high grade fever even after 5 days, then persistence of loose stools after 5 days, and increasing dry cough, breathlessness, exhaustion on routine work. Then, three most important medications to counter storm, which includes steroids, which can be given oral or IV, then anticoagulation, and oxygen. See, friends, antivirals are not there in the important three list. So, if it is available, you can give, but if it's not available, don't panic. Don't force the patient to buy it from outside. If it is available, patient is affordable, then give. If not, steroid, anticoagulation, and oxygen will work in most of the cases. Then, three clues to catch early hypoxia, which includes mandatory six minute walk test and SPO2 checking before and after that. Then, resting heart rate that is in a febrile state. Then, Cuff on lying and deep inspiration or cuff which interrupt the speech. The next is three supportive care measures which is usually neglected. First and important thing is prone positioning. Friends, government itself has released importance of prone positioning and we have seen many patients whose saturation is remarkably improving after proning. The next is glycemic control. As we are starting patients on steroids, the sugars are going to increase. The strict glycemic control is very important which will prevent many complications like sepsis and certain opportunistic infection. Then fluid intake. Dehydration also increases the risk of thrombosis. Then three mistakes with steroid. It is very important point. First is early use of steroid from day 1 or 2 irrespective of dose. This point tells avoid using early steroid and also avoid using very high doses of steroid. IV 40 to 80 mg of methylpred or equivalent is sufficient in most of the cases and not taping at the earliest after improvement. So the take home point is start at appropriate time, give the appropriate dose and taper at appropriate time if the improvement is there. The next is three complications with steroids. First and foremost as we discussed is poor glycemic control. Most of the IP patients on steroids needs insulin. Then bacterial sepsis which can cause respiking of fever or worsening of lung or worsening of pneumonia. Then opportunity infection which includes oral or esophageal candidiasis, pulmonary aspergillosis and the most drastic rhinoocular mucormycosis. Then three misinterpreted lab values. First of all, increasing WBC and neutrophil count after initiation of steroids. Remember friends, neutrophil lymphocyte ratio is not reliable after starting steroids. This is because steroid itself changes the immune response to the disease. Then high CRP as sepsis in early second week. Do not consider increased CRP as sepsis in second week. The normal D-dimer value has no need for anticoagulant even in sick. Even if D-dimer value is normal, you have to give anticoagulation to the patient because COVID itself is a hypercoagulable state. Even if D-dimer is normal, Anticoagulation is must for each and every patient in moderate to severe disease. Then, three extended tests useful in ICU. First is interleukin 6. If it is more than 10 times or more than 50, it indicates cytokine storm. Then, procalcitonin. It is required as CRP cannot differentiate inflammation versus sepsis. So, procalcitonin can be used to rule out severe sepsis or severe bacterial infection. Then, doing bacterial and fungal cultures, sending early culture before initiation of antibiotics is important. Then, three unnecessary tests, CT test to see improvement or resolution despite clinical improvement. It is my humble request to avoid doing repeat CT if patient is clinically improving. Then, repeating RT-PCR or rapid antigen test on the 14th day. This can even be false positive even if dead virus are present. 
so it is illogical and inappropriate to repeat the test after 14 days of quarantine or isolation then lab markers despite of clinical improvement or patient is off oxygen the one exception is d dimer d dimer can be repeated even if the value is high or previous value is normal then three must do things if patient is hypoxic or waiting for a bed at home or ambulance injection dexamethasone 2 ml bd or tablet methylprid 32 mg bd can be given if patient is waiting for admission then anticoagulation has to be given which can include injection clexin or novel anticoagulants like epixaban don't panic if remdesivir is not available about two drugs make all the difference then three points to remember for remdesivir mild disease don't give the remdesivir then moderate disease and patient is affordable and drug is available don't delay the treatment only remdesivir is helpful then if patient is affordable but it is not available then don't panic try to make it available and if it is available don't delay then patient not affordable and drug is not available don't bother because as i discussed steroids and anticoagulation matters the most and severe or late presentation the role of remdesivir is questionable then three things to avoid while on treatment whatsapp messages google updates and negative news then three things which makes the difference will power immunity and faith in treatment recently we have seen the news that patient treated with fake remdesivir has seen drastic improvement this is because of the faith in treatment so friends this was all about this video i hope you like the content this were the few clinically important points for covid-19 management do share it among all doctors you know thank you have a nice day